And greetings everyone, I'm Mar. Once again, this is my opinion, as you can tell from the title. We're in the second of the four-part series that uh, I started with the last episode that went live for Everybody Loves Raymond. Of course, this is Season 6, Episode 23, The Bigger Person. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. And it's written by Tucker Colley and Lou Schneider, and they do a pretty good job of continuing off the threads. Especially considering that the writers who are doing the majority of this little four-part series have been with the show either from the beginning or pretty close to the beginning. I'd have to actually go back and look and see what their first episodes were, but by this point, they've been writers on the show a while. They know these characters like the back of their hand, so writing something like this is child's play, other than maybe coming up with how to solve it and what the instigating incident will be. Before I get too far into it, just a reminder, if you want to support the channel, both the Patreon and PayPal links are down below. If you want to just do a one-off support or a one-off request, go the PayPal route. If you just want to continuously support the channel and gain access to videos early and be able to suggest topics for future videos, such as reviews of movies with lines like, PUT THE COOKIE DOWN! Or, well, you got just three seashells in there. The Patreon route's the way to go. Either way, your support is appreciated. The bigger person. Now, in the last episode, we saw what the big blowout was and how it's starting to affect the family. This episode, we get to see a little bit more of how it's affecting the family, but we also get to see how Frank and Ray, in their own Frank and Ray ways, decide, you know what, it's not our fault that these two can't just get along and talk it out, so why don't we just figure out a way to enjoy this in our own ways? And what is their own ways? They're going to exploit the situation, as Robert puts it. Now, the episode begins pretty normal enough. You know, they're just chilling, watching TV. They're in the middle of everything. They're like, oh, great, how are we going to handle this now? But then an idea strikes on them that they notice something like, hey, whenever I tell her I'm coming over here, she starts acting a lot nicer. Yeah, the same thing here. Whenever I tell Deborah I'm going across the street, she goes out of her way to be nice. And so they come across a plan. You know what? Maybe we should start exploiting this actively instead of just passively. And they start doing it. Like there's a big old scene where they actively are putting them against each other with both Marie and Deborah in the same room. And it keeps escalating. Like, oh, maybe I'll get a bottle of wine. Ooh, Marie, no wine. And then Marie going, yeah, I'll cook a lamb, a whole lamb. And from the beginning... Robert sees what they're doing, and he's one that's like, I don't want to do this. This is not the way a family should be behaving. You're exploiting the situation. Now, we know, despite the fact he's a cop, Robert doesn't like unnecessary drama, which I'm all for. I agree with that. Unnecessary drama that you bring into one's life, not good, especially a situation like this that could easily be rectified with proper communication, even though it is played up for the fact that you got to have a little bit of friction for that to be comedy, as someone in the first six years video so aptly said which by the way I looked up uh, that first six years thing if I haven't mentioned it already when it was actually shown live apparently it aired before this four part one which I did not know that which I guess makes a little sense well as the two keep exploiting it and trying to figure out what to do how to keep taking this thing up to the next level they land on this Frank's like hmm maybe I can get her to go up to the roof and install a satellite dish and Ray's like, hmm, maybe I can get her to just let me go on a golf retreat in Myrtle Beach. Now, we've seen Ray in the past try to use the whole gifting process in order to get stuff out of his wife like that. Like the whole one with the thought that counts. Get, no, no, that's not, that's not, season, not that gift, but the one where he got her the pots and pans and all that. To try to get to go on a golf retreat by making her happy. And then all a bunch of other stuff. But that's just how Ray is. And he's going to continue to think and act like that. And of course be oblivious in certain things. But that's how Ray is. Here, him and his dad. You really see how Ray is like Frank in this one. I mean, we've seen other instances where it's like more subtle compared to Frank. Or less egregious. But here, we start to see in a situation like this, they really are alike. And Robert seems to take after his mother a little bit more in this regard like yeah I'm not gonna let this go so Robert does the right thing and he goes and tells both Deborah and Marie what's going on I like his little analogy at first that he's trying to calm him down you know like you know how they say that you shouldn't go to bed mad well I say you shouldn't go to the big bed mad 
which is a good thing. I mean, life's too short to be holding on to these petty grudges. And sometimes you want to make up before you go just so you can say that you have no regrets. Because I think probably one of the worst things that could happen is if you want to make up with someone you wanted to and then they pass and you never had the chance. That's another reason why I say the two most dangerous words in the English language when put together are what if. I mean, there's a lot of what ifs. That's why the whole thing that Robert said in that one season five episode, you know, regrets, what a menu, where should I start? Rather, you can, that one hits you a lot. Now, me personally, just a little interject, I haven't really had a lot of family issues where it's been big like this. It's usually just been personal stuff and little minor stuff that like, okay, I'm not going to get involved in that. It's more like the extended family that have had stuff that have happened like that. Only one that I would say to this scale, well, I'm not going to go too much into it. Let's just say it's one of those in instances It's like really sins of the father much. You're really going to not want to have anything to do with him because of that. Well, obviously. And just so you know, this is not involved in direct family. This is more like side side family, not like cousins or anything, but like ones that are extended family because they're related to a family member. That's all I'll put. Uh, and, uh, it's not really by marriage, so just in case I got anyone wondering like which one, because there's been a couple ones that might fit that. All I'll say is that it does involve workman's comp. That's the only other thing I'll throw in there with it. Now, give it back into this. Robert does tell the two that they are exploiting the situation actively. We see the whole conversation he has with Deborah. We only see part of the one he has with Marie, where he's in like the big, big, ma big bed mad, and she doesn't really want to go off. And then he's like, okay. And then we see the aftermath of it, where Deborah. I'm playing it off at first because Ray comes in, and even if Deborah did not know what he was doing, Ray is being far from subtle with his approach here. He's got a new golf club. He's like, oh, yeah, a little bit more expensive than I wanted, but hey, it'll be worth the money you now in case I go on a golf retreat. Like, really? Maybe it's because of the context that is seen that it doesn't seem as subtle, but I have it. I have a hard time believing that. Deborah would not have noticed something about that, but you never know what have probably been the follow-up. Deborah does confront Ray about it and be like, how long do you think you two would be able to lie to me and your mother? Then it cuts to across the street, where it's basically the same type of situation involving Frank Marie and the satellite dish, where Frank tries to play it off, you know, hey, you know what the guys are just telling me? And then Marie, you know, he asks Marie to make him a sandwich, or should I say tells Marie to make him a sandwich. You know, gives the order, and then she starts whacking him with the bread. Now, I know this is all played for comedy, but are we going to ignore the fact that in real life that would technically be assault and battery? I mean, it'd be on the minor scale, even but even though they are older, and they, it's around the age where you're going to start bruising just from light stuff, but still the fact is, like, are we going to ignore that fact that that is domestic violence? Is it just funny because it's the female hitting the woman, hitting the man? I mean, if it was Frank and Marie, we wouldn't be laughing. And even if it was just the bread, unless it was like, unless it was like in a game situation where you know, whacking each other with like foam weapons, that'd be one thing. But here, because she's in anger, whacking him with the bread, and he's like, oh, okay, okay, because he doesn't understand why. We're just gonna ignore that. I know, I know. Some people go, yeah, you're getting too far into it, but it's something we have to address. It is one of those things, you know that. In the time, it could be considered funny. I mean, what was the whole thing with the honeymooners that a certain bus character would be? One of these days, one of these days, boom, bow, right to the moon. Threat of domestic violence for humor. Of course, Family Guy already made fun of how it probably would have looked if he actually did follow through in one episode. Would have been a very serious episode, but here, they just kind of go over it. In the moment, though, with everything, it is kind of funny. But you guys, well, you guys still got to address it. Now, what makes it is Frank's reaction. Peter Boyle is like, well, why are you hitting me with bread? That's his reaction. Because at first he thinks it's because he picked the wrong type of bread. Okay, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then Deb Marie brings out, you know, like, he, I know you're exploiting the situation. And then before she storms out, Ray comes in, and it looks like Deborah bent the putter. Which, I know she's angry in the situation, but I think that is taking it a step too far. Because now you're destroying someone else's private property. And in anger, too. Which that could go under domestic violence thing, which I know it's played for comedy, but it's something i got to address. I mean, there's a handful of moments in this show that in retrospect you could say, yeah, that's domestic violence and all that. And all 
all this stuff. But here, yeah, that doesn't make it right, Deborah. You could have just stormed out. You didn't have to actually break the putter, even if Ray did deserve it with his behavior along with Frank. Now, they figure out who the snitch was because Robert has to walk back in at the wrong time because he forgot his thumbs, and then they confront him. And Marie is all on Robert's side, telling the boys that they're going to have to deal with it until he finds out not only did Robert tell Deborah the same talk, but she, t she was told first. Now, with that, it's like... Marie was getting all angry about it, and mainly because she didn't answer the phone when Deborah called using their whole signal, which I kind of skimmed over, but I don't want to cover every single moment in the episode because there are some funny moments in there, but that's a good one. And she's all like, oh, go, why don't you tell Deborah that? And I am, and then her demeanor changes, and she's like, you did? It's like, you were just getting on his case about not telling Deborah this whole thing, and now that you found out he did, you're now mad at him for that? It's like... It's like nobody can win for nothing in this whole situation between Deborah and Marie. And it's one of those things like, really, Marie, really? I mean, it's not as bad as I'm going to rant on the character in the next episode with a little bit of hypocrisy, but we'll save that for the next episode, the season finale. Now, eventually, because of all this, Deborah tries to come over and make peace, but doesn't work. Oh, and that's the next episode, excuse me. That was her peace thing. I watch them both back to back, so sorry if, well, for this, some of them are kind of going together. Marie does kick Robert out, and Robert does do his whole big analogy thing, which kind of sums up how he plays into getting them back together in the beginning of the season. Sorry for a spoiler. And that is, when we're all alone in that big bed, I'll be the only one who can sleep through the night. Nice little moment, him taking him stand. And, of course, Ray does interject with his little bit of comedy, so... Adds a little bit of levity to that dramatic situation. And it's a nice little callback to season two. I'm not sleeping in that bed with him. He sleeps naked. And of course we see he still does, but it's an implied one. Where at the end they're showing a bunch of different stuff and he's in a bed all by himself naked. Obviously taking Tums. And of course Ray tries to sneak out to go to the golf retreat to Myrtle Beach anyway. And then Deborah catches him. Which makes me wonder, Deborah, how long were you waiting out there for Ray to come out? What if he was coming out to take the kids to something? Would you have just waited and laid and wait for him to come back and be like, where are they? You took the kids to Myrtle Beach? That in of itself would be a whole other dramatic episode. But here, she's just laying in wait, like, where is he going? And then chases it back inside. And of course, Frank having to make his own food, and then Marie steals it, and I'd like some chips, so a nice little bit of subversion there. Roll reversal. And <laughs> Frank doing it. Perfect. Perfect way to end the episode. And we see that things are not going to be going back to the status quo anytime soon. And, of course, from what I've told you, it's definitely halfway through all that. we got two more episodes to go through. The last of Season 6 and the first of Season 7. And I'd say that's a perfect way to end Season 6. Because then you go throughout the whole summer like, what's going to happen now with the Barones? Uh, sometimes ending a cliffhanger does work. I mean, The Simpsons, there was a whole thing about who shot Mr. Burns, which, of course, was itself a parody of who shot J.R. And there's other big stuff that have happened. <clears throat> so here, ending it on a cliffhanger, like, will they or won't they when it comes to them reconciliating? Perfect way. And then, of course, Season 7. Which I don't remember. I believe I brought it up in the first episode of this season, or one of them, but... Initially, what they were planning, at least in the beginning of 2001, they were planning on, at least the deal they signed with HBO and Worldwide Pants, was for there to be two seasons. I think I think 2001 would have been the previous season, so it would have been this and this. That's how I probably did bring that up. Rosenthal explained that he and Ray planned for the 7th to be the show's last, and he was like, I never saw a show get better after 7 seasons, which is true. But just because it doesn't get better doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that you've already passed your peak. I mean, you could go downhill to the point where like, yeah. And in some instances, sometimes a show does kind of stagnate and go downhill even with the seventh season. But then sometimes if it goes past that, you can still be good, but it won't be as good. And sometimes, of course, by that point, you got to start changing the cast. That's really the only main issue I've had with a lot of the Law & Order shows, at least the ones I watch, which would mainly be the first one and then SVU, is that as the show drags on and some of the actors want to leave to pursue other projects, 
you got to replace them, and sometimes the chemistry isn't as good. But even then, sometimes early on, before they get the main cast or something like that, which in a video I do have a plan up here for, I'm going to touch on that with it. But that's another day, another video. So my whole thoughts on that whole seven, Season 7 situation, that will probably be something I tackle when I start doing the Season 7 episodes. I'll probably bring it up every now and then, but definitely in the Season 7 finale I'll bring it up. But definitely in the starter one, as I talk about like what the prevailing storyline is going to be. I might like, leave that for when the prevailing storyline actually starts becoming apparent. Because yeah, then it will be pertinent to actually discuss that and be like, oh yeah. And then leading into the season finale. Of season 7, I know, I know I'm spitballing <laughs> about the future plans for other videos and then videos in this one. Because there's not really much else to talk about with this episode. And I know I'm kind of dragging the video a bit, which I do apologize for. But sometimes, you know, this stream of consciousness writing does kind of do with that. Uh, not really much else to talk about. Other, you know, the actors do a good job with their roles, as always. I mean, by this point in the show, they definitely should know how to handle them. Like I already mentioned, Tucker and Lou. And then, next one we're going to get into is going to be the season finale. And the last flashback episode. And... Uh, after not watching them, I probably should go back and do just like a side video, maybe. Maybe if I need to skip a week to record more, just do a side video about ranking the flashback episodes of Everybody Loves Raymond. Maybe watch all six of them in sequence again. But definitely that would be a fun one. I don't know if it would be an off-the-cuff one like this or that would be a video essay one like the other one, but it definitely would be fun. And give my reasons for why each one's are that. I know at the end it'd probably be interesting to do ones on each of the season finales or maybe the non-flashback season finales. See if they have that same oomph. Season 7 definitely does, but that's kind of hard to beat that one. But We'll get to that when we get to that. Now, next is going to be the last flashback, as I said. And it's going to be another Ray Deborah one, as most of these have been. But it's one of those things like, what can you tackle now? First season, we tackled... How they moved across the streets. Second season, we tackled their wedding. Third season, we tackled how they met. Fourth season, we tackled Robert's divorce. And last season, we tackled Allie's birth. What other big moments could they tackle that we haven't tackled already? Hmm. I know. We can tackle the first time that Ray and Deborah made love. And that will be the next episode. The first time. That's more than just what they're doing. That's the name of the episode. Until then, everyone.